Hi everyone, this is Joe from Gentleman Stationer. Welcome back. Um, it's been a while. I have been either traveling at pen shows or recovering from traveling to pen shows. Um, I haven't done one of these YouTube videos in a while, and that's because while I was at the DC pen show earlier this month in August, I talked for three days um, shouting in a crowded ballroom and completely lost my voice. So I'm just now getting it back, back to the point where I can speak relatively uninterrupted. Um, I've got some water here. I may, uh, I may need to pause and take a quick break um, to get through this video. But what I wanted to do, I've been meaning to do a video to talk about, you know, some of the things I brought home from the DC Pen Show and also um, show off a few of the things that I may bring with me to the San Francisco Pen Show, which is this coming weekend. Um, if you live in the San Francisco area, or if you're planning to come to San Francisco this coming week for the DC Pen Show, I plan to have a table there. Um, as in DC, I'll be next to the Van Ness Pens crew. So please uh, come by and say hi if you're going to be there at the show. Some of the things um, that you may want to look for in San Francisco are some of the same things that I brought home from the DC Pen Show. Namely, um, these gorgeous pen trays um, from Toyoka Craft. Uh, Toyoka Craft is a Japanese company that um, that makes these uh, lacquered wooden trays with um, very nice soft cloth inlays that um, will not scratch your pens and protect your pens. Um, this is uh, a black, uh, I believe it's alder, black alder with a burgundy interior, our website colors. This is a Hinoki blue. It's one of their special edition lacquered trays. They also have pen chests and pen rests. Um, in that color, they're gorgeous. Um, it's offset with a nice gray colored finish. If um, if you're interested in Toyuka Craft, I'd highly recommend that you hit their table very early at the um, at the San Francisco show. A lot of the larger pieces, like the hundred pen chests and some of the other larger items. I'm sorry, I'm going to take a drink of water here. Um, some of the larger items sell, sold out really fast in DC. And when they were in San Francisco last year, the same thing happened. So um, what I've got here in the tray are some of the pens that I brought home from the DC Pen Show that I've been writing with like recently. Um, first up is the one that was staring me in the face throughout the entire DC Pen Show weekend. This is the second collaboration between Van Ness Pens and the Good Blue Company out of the UK. I think I did a previous video in which I showed um, I, or maybe I, maybe it was a blog post review in which I reviewed the Good Blue and their Flex Nib. This one I actually chose to kit out with their Zoom Nib. And I've recently done a post in which I showed off a writing sample of it. The Zoom Nib is a little bit different than a Sailor Zoom. It's much narrower and it writes probably a little bit similar to a Naginata in the sense that the standard writing angle is more of a medium as opposed to a broad like on the Sailor Zoom. If you write with it at a steep angle, you get a finer t uh, finer point. And if you write with it at a low angle, you get a broad point. But like the other edition, it's Cerakote, um, black Cerakote with a green splatter on it. This is a special edition pen that I believe Van Ness still has stock of. And if they do, there will be some coming to San Francisco. Um, but this is one of the ones that I didn't want to miss out on, so I picked it up in DC. Um, I've also got my um, Touchstone, which is a collaboration between Penquisition and Gravitas pens. And I opted for the kind of bright cerulean turquoise blue with the red section. Um, as you can see, it's got Evan and Julian's Penquisition nib on it. This is a Yovo number six. It's not the standard Gravitas nib, and you can see I've got a nice blue, blue shimmer ink in there. But th the story behind this pen and what makes it so nice and somewhat attractive to me is that it's big enough to write with unposted, but it was designed as a pocket pen that actually posts into a chunky full-size pen, so it feels substantial in the hand. So if you like larger pens and tend to find pocket pens too narrow or too short, you might want to check this one out. Again, this is the Touchstone, um, which is a collaboration between Penquisition in the U.S. and Gravitas pens, which is Ben Walsh Designs in Ireland. I will have links to all these pens in the um, in the notes and the description. So if you see something you like and you want to know where to buy it or where to where to find it or learn more about it, um, check out those notes. Let's see. Another pen I picked up at the DC show is this one, and this is the the Daedalus uh, 
3.1, which is, as you can see, it's from Desiderata Pens in Chicago. Um, it's the 2023, um, this is number 20, let's see if it's 25 or 20, I think it's uh, 23 out of 40. Um, but it's a red ripple ebonite, <clears throat> which gives it a nice vintage look. And it holds a, right now it holds a Zebra G calligraphy nib. And I've been using this to pra kind of practice my handwriting and my flex writing. Um, it's got a piston filler on it. Um, if you're a calligrapher, you simply like writing with a flex pen. I've always enjoyed these um, Desiderata pens. They, you know, they hold a fair bit of ink. They've got an ebonite feed. You do have to replace the calligraphy nib um, every once in a while because you know after about a month they'll start to rust and they just won't write very well but they're designed to be replaced it's easy to pull them in and out and refit the feed to them i um i've got two of them this is my second one and i'm really glad to have this one in my in my collection i was waiting for him to reissue a new version of the daedalus with the piston filler and i grabbed this nearly immediately at the show um uh what arrived in the mail for our shop right before the DC pen show was the Twisby Sunset Yellow, um, the Diamond 580 Sunset Yellow, which is more of a, I would say it's more of a light orange to me, or maybe a gold. It, look, it looks, I'm looking at it through the camera and it looks more gold. I'm looking at it outside the camera and it looks more orange. Um, I would consider this kind of a light pale orange color. I'm going to pair it with an orange ink, but I, personally, I think Twisby's been killing it this year with the different colors that they've done. And, you know, given what they've announced recently, they're it's just going to keep getting better. So I'm adding more Twisbees to my collection. Going down the row, we have the new Leonardo Memento Zero in Micarta, which is a collaboration with Stile Stile, Stile Stile, Stile out of Italy. Um, this pen is fabulous. Uh, my Micarta turned out a little bit darker than what it looked like on the images. They sent me an email to ask if that was all right. I said, absolutely, send it over. This um, this is going to start to pat. It's already starting to pat now a little bit from my hand, patina from my hand. Um, I haven't dipped the section in ink yet to get a little stain on it. I think I probably will at some point because I want this pen to look um, to appear used. I tend to use it. Um, but I've always wanted a Micarta pen. Uh, the, one of the big regrets from my early days of pen collecting was not picking up one of the earlier Twisby Micartas. And um, to add this one um, to my collection was kind of a big, a big score. I mean, this was like, it was like $150, I think, maybe $165 or something. But it was a, it was a very nice, it was a very nice price um, for a Micarta pen, which are sometimes hard to come across. And when you do, they, you do come across them, it's expensive. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to drop one more mention of our own Heinz pen collaboration with the Crimson Nibs. Um, you've probably seen these a lot on the blog. We're almost sold out of them. I have two left. Uh, they're either going to get sold this week or they're coming with me to San Francisco where I'm almost certain they will sell out. So if you're interested in them, um, we have one that looks almost exactly like this one with a lot of gray in it. And then we have another one that's more all tight swirls with the, the white, red, gray, and black in it. So if you're interested in that, we can do a black or a red nib. We have some nib sizes out of stock, but we have most, you know, most available. I want to say maybe medium is the only size we don't have in red, but we do have it in black. And finally, one of the crazier things that I did when I was in DC, I bought my first st stacked nib from uh, Jim Crawford, who sells over at Pensloth. Um, this is a cross point style and I'll do, I plan to do another video um, showing how this pen writes. I just kind of wanted to talk about it today, but this is two nibs stacked on top of each other and then ground to kind of an architect's point. So you get a wide cross stroke and a narrow down stroke and it's really just an exaggerated architect. It's also got a nice piece of tipping on the top. So it writes like a standard fine nib when you're writing with it upside down. The pen I've added this to is my Tucker from Jason Neal Penworks in that Damascus and purple um, acrylic. And I'll plan to, I'm planning to review this pen on the blog and maybe here on the, on the YouTube channel separately. Anyway, this is what I brought back from DC with me. Um, it's kind of an overview of what I've been playing around with for the past couple of weeks. These Toyoko craft trays are probably my favorite thing that's sitting on this table in front of me right now. I can't tell you how beautiful these are and how angry I am at myself for not picking these up sooner because they've been on my radar for a couple of years now. 
Um, I'm going to use these trays more and more, both for pen show displays, for you know, um, pen meets, pen swaps. I'm going to pick up a couple more of them um, in San Francisco because they're just they just make it really easy. They they're stackable. Um, they have lids, and I'll show you how it works. Um, the blue, the Hinoki blue, comes with a glass glass lid, so you can use this to transport pens. I believe they become stackable when you take the glass top off and that way you can you can um, transport multiple pens but anyway these um, these should be something you should consider if you're in the market for pen storage I've I get a lot of questions either through the website or on um, on the YouTube channel or on Instagram or just via email what are some nice um, storage solutions um, this by far right now is the nicest that I've seen Anyway, that's this episode of Currently Inked. Um, hopefully, I may try to do a video if my voice holds out at San Francisco. Um, these shows tend to take a lot out of me, but um, I'll definitely be back on the channel once things calm down a little bit more with um, some more content because I enjoy doing the video content. I want to do some more pen demonstrations, and I'll definitely do more of the Currently Inked series. Thanks. Bye.